Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Class 1A podcast. I am back once again to walk you through alongside Dylan Beal and James Graham everything that happened in episode 8 of the newest season of My Year Academia, match 3 conclusion. And I think it was quite a conclusion and just a fight overall to talk about. So we're all very excited to dive into that. We'll be doing the recap and such shortly. But before we do that, last week, I didn't get to talk too much with you guys about that. So how are you guys doing? And just give me a quick rundown, 30 seconds. What do you thought of last week's episode, like on a scale of 1 to 10? This will we all know if I've been sold last week's episode or something like that, we're all on the same page. Set us off, Dylan. Set yeah, us off. I would say it was a six. It was a pretty solid uh, build-up episode. Um, it wasn't bad, um, but it definitely left me wanting this episode here. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna. Go, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it a solid six too. Like, I mean, it, it wasn't. It wasn't amazing as like a hype up episode. It definitely like there was a. They really loved the flashbacks with no real necess- necessity besides Ida's. Um, but other than that, like it was, it was, you know, it was expected. It was ex- like, it, it went the way it should have went, but there was no like, oh my God. And then a teaser for today's, what do you guys give today's episode? Ooh, 10. It's a 10. Yeah. Well, this is, this is, this, this is my hero. This is my hero for sure. I had a feeling that was going to be, it's, 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 yeah, it's a 10 for me too. This is definitely one of my favorite new episodes in a very long time. So all of us are very, very excited to talk about that. But before we do. Please, if you are listening on podcasting platforms, go and leave a five-star review. It helps us out a ton. It helps other people find the podcast. Or if you are watching over on YouTube at youtube.com slash class1apod, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, leave comments what you thought on this episode or just general questions you have. All that in YouTube would be an awesome. We appreciate any kind of interaction. We always enjoy comments and such that we get. So thank you to those who do interact. Also, if you want to keep up to date with everything that we do, make sure to go over to twitter.com slash class1apod where we have been doing all kinds of different posts, teasers. We've been talking about the upcoming mobile game. We always do our short videos and things like that. So make sure to follow that for all of the content we do around My Hero Academia. But with that, let's jump into the quick recap of Episode 8, Match 3 Conclusion, before talking about our thoughts. It starts off with a short recap of the beginning of Match 3 and picks right back up with Ida breaking out of the ice using Recipro Turbo. Ida is going so fast that he can barely control it, but even so, Mudman realizes that he has no chance of winning this fight one-on-one, so he drops below the ice and starts heading to help his teammates. Ida takes a second to think about where he's going to go, and during that, we jump over to Ojiro versus Sayabara, still fighting, and it's clear that Ojiro really has no chance of winning this one-on-one. Right as Ojiro is about to lose, Ida sweeps in and takes Sayabara straight to jail. Todoroki and Tetsu Tetsu are having a showdown while Shoji goes after Pony. We see that due to Tetsu Tetsu's training of his quirk, that pretty much to- uh, Todoroki's ice and fire both doesn't bother him too much in that Tetsu Tetsu is pretty much immune to all of Todoroki's attack. Todoroki has a bunch of flashbacks about Endeavor and suddenly starts to heat up to extreme levels, hotter than he's ever gone, so much so that it breaks a nearby camera that they're using to watch the fight happen. The heat is really too much to handle for both Todoroki and Tetsu Tetsu, but they continue to brawl. Meanwhile, we do see that Ojiro and Soji team up to capture Pony, but right as they're about to take her to jail, Mudman comes in and sinks all of them down, and Pony then uses her horns to shoot herself and Ojiro into jail, but because of the rules, only Ojiro is in jail, and Pony returns back to the fight. Todoroki is about to pretty much put a fire or Sengon straight into Tetsu Tetsu, but as he's about to do that, Mudman also sinks that whole battlefield down below the ground, and then knocks some pipes into Todoroki, knocking him out, and Tetsu Tetsu pretty much unconscious at this point as well. But Ida comes in to rescue Todoroki and knocks out Mudman basically with a single punch. But before Mudman and Tetsu Tetsu pass out, they knock over a giant tower on a Todoroki and Ida, pretty much all four of them passing out and not being able to do everything. Pretty much Pony and Soji are the only two left to continue the fight, and since Pony doesn't really see an easy way to win the fight, she then uses her horns to fly all up in the air and just waits for the time to run out, ending the fight in a draw 1-1, with the overall score between Class 1A being 1-1 and and then a draw, so it's still 1-1 going into Match 4. We do get a short teaser of Fight 4, which is going to have Bakugo and the other recommended students from Class 1B, which will be next week's episode. So I guess we already all agreed that this is a 10 out of 10 episode. And I have a couple of talking points. But before we get that, I just want to know why you guys thought this was such a good episode. 
So yeah, I, I think the biggest thing about it is that no one felt useless in this. So a lot of the other fights, you had people that just didn't do anything or people that were kind of like fodder that were instantly just like thrown in jail or whatever. Everyone had a purpose here. Everyone had like at least a little moment for them to shine. And I think that really brought just the overall quality up uh, like a ton. Absolutely. Yeah, I think having a, an episode of like showcase every member like doing something like e either relevant to like what their quirk is or their role is in like hero society or, you know, just them being kind of a badass. Like, I think that's a huge, there's a huge asset of like a, a good episode. I do. I do want to just make one comment about how Andrew led into this. And it, I just realized it was a generational thing. So Andrew said a fire SN gun for Todoroki. And I know me and my boy Dylan. Oh, like a fire bomb or whatever. It it is. We would have called it like a fire Kamehameha or some shit, dude. Like it a hundred percent would have been a yep. DVD yep. reference. So, but no, I think, I think, I think Dylan hits the nail on the head that it like, it it showcases everybody for sure. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's borderline. Ojiro is useless, but he does have the one cool attack. against Mudman, which brings him up a little higher than people like Aoyama. Um, Invisible Girl, Dragon Trout, like those are really characters that did nothing in those fights. But Ojiro here at least had time to shine a little bit in a one on one, even if he was losing. So I agree, all the characters had really cool moments. I think another thing for me is that this was a different animation style for sure. Like, yeah, the colors mm -hmm. in this episode were amazing. Ida flashing around was so cool. The Tetsu Tetsu colors during that entire fight there, the animation just felt different. And Dylan, James, you guys are a little bit more about the CGI and all that kind of stuff. Did it have anything to do with that? Or did they just change up how they did the drawings for this week? I think, I think it was I, just changing it up, right? Yeah, it felt, it felt, it, felt, it almost felt stylistically different though. Cause you had the, you had like the, the sound effects being animated and stuff like that too. Like these very little tweaks that really like made it, made the show stand out. Like, I, I don't want to like uh, to draw a comparison like uh the newest like uh into the spider verse kind of did this in a, like to great success you know using actual like sound effects in the like ant like like you know with words in the show and I think it really drives the point home I think with this they did it when basically Todoroki exploded um and it just it just adds to it and the colors were much more vibrant the animation was crisper um you know I jokingly said in our slack like after this episode after we watched this episode I'm like they they blew the budget on this because yeah. like they used so much so uh, looking back at some of the other episodes where we saw that change as well um I'm thinking mostly to the first fight of where we saw like the frame rate turn up in a lot of mm -hmm. those fights I'm wondering if they have like an A and B team uh, on this season one that's like working on like kind of like the in-between and one that's like focusing specifically on the fights i wonder if that's the case and that's why we're seeing the stylistic mm. changes yeah i was gonna make that joke because it's a huge thing in the warcraft community that they do like that with the expansions but i genuinely wonder if they do that in this just because like yeah you you can have basically these episodes always ready to go in the, the quality that you watch them and like the, the you know the a team that does these crazy episodes like this they have a lot more time to work on it or the b team can do like I don't want to say like the filler episodes, but the episodes that just aren't like the, the, the story doesn't have a chance to give it, let it be as flashy. Right. Yeah. And I guess the, out of the three fights so far, I mean, we talk animation aside and all that, which one is your favorite so far? I mean, is that part of the, what makes this episode a 10 out of 10 that the overall fight was better? Were there other aspects? Is this everyone's favorite fight so far? I think so. I think this like, and you know, and I think the biggest thing it was, is it wasn't a blowout. It like and, it, and like like we said before, it showcased everybody, right? You had some people that were very evenly met. Like you had a bunch of like stylistic matchups, ones that made sense, like Kybera and Ojiro, and ones that didn't make sense. But when you saw them executed, it was sick, like Tetsu Tetsu and Todoroki. Like the like the two of them going at it, that was that was bomb. Like that was that was the shit right there. So I think that's why this one definitely stands out the most. Um, even even if there is like some really cool like takeaways from the other ones, like with like how Momo did last episode and or last fight and stuff like that, I think there's the other ones had good qualities, but this one just had all the qual like it had all the good qualities. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think this was a a fight if you enjoyed fights, and the last fight was one if you enjoyed quirks. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's a good way of putting. That's it, a really sure. good way of putting it there because yeah, really, I mean. Really, the I guess Mudman was the main quirk that we kind of saw being used. And I guess obviously Ida had the shine outs and all that, but Todoroki and Tetsu Tetsu fight was kind of just Todoroki on fire and Tetsu Tetsu punching him. Like that's not a showcase of quirks. Mudman was really the only one here, and Pony a little bit too. Their small usage, but I actually agree that's a really good 
kind of differentiator there. But I guess, Dylan, this might be a translation thing for me. Or do they all hate Ojiro? <laughs> Why do they keep calling him ordinary like 10 times in this episode? It's like, do you think that's a bunch of different words in Japanese kind of just being easily translated back to ordinary? Or are they just kind of, because he's not the ordinary hero. He's the martial arts hero tales or whatever. Yeah, I, I, I'm not too sure, but like, I think it's always joked about that he's like, he's the normal type. Yeah, you know? he is. A, he just, he just fights. He's got a tail and he fights. Yeah. Yeah, it was. So the, I remember this from like way back in the day, but yeah, Ojiro was like ordinary and uh, Seto was plain. Like though that was the way, the way they did the two of them. They just kind of made fun of them because these guys are very generic. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, but it is. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, maybe they're just kind of delving into that, but like when he jumped on top of Pony and captured with her tail. Like, the way you captured me was so ordinary. Like, it just didn't feel like it made sense when you translated it over, but maybe they're just kind of digging into him being ordinary and everything he does isn't super flashy or anything. Yeah, because I, I think the whole idea behind that is, like, of course you're going to grab the horn person by the horns. That's, oh. like, the, the stereotypical kind yeah. of thing. I guess that does make it sense. They did a lot with uh, Juzo too. Like Juzo, they kept hammering that he was like, you know, his flexible. his fighting yeah. He was very flexible, exactly, right? Which is just, I think that's just kind of a pun off his quirk. But um, Dylan, talking about grabbing something by the horns, you didn't give me any information. You just said I want to talk pony, so I don't know what way this is gonna go. But go ahead. Okay, this bothered me so much. I don't know why. Okay, so Sunatori Pony, right? She is presumably from America or Canada or something, somewhere where they speak English. She's a native English speaker why is it her internal monologue japanese <laughs> why is it when she's talking to herself in her head it's in japanese that's wow i yeah. like, that happened and it bothered me so much like i know i know why it's 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 a show but that happened and i was like why why i i, I that's actually a really good it. point yeah that yeah you you'd think right like and it's it's weird that they like and my hero is so good at usually picking up on stuff like that. I'm very surprised this like this slipped through the cracks. I mean, you could do anything. It's like cultural immersion. Like maybe, I mean, yeah, she just has the accent because she lived there the first eight years. For the last six years, she's lived in Japan now. And it's only flips back when she gets mad. Like, I think there's ways you can kind of walk out of that. But I didn't even notice it. But I think that's actually really funny. Actually, no, they, they do say that she goes, she reverts back to English when she's anxious. But well, I would that, consider like, that an anxious moment. I will. So, and that's what I was saying. Like, as I was saying, it was like that, that, like, I mean, that was her panicking, trying to figure out how to beat, how to beat Shoji. So, yeah. And I guess talking about Shoji, you also just asked me, Hey, I want to talk about Shoji with very say, little context. No, it was like, for me, it was, it was nice to see Shoji not basically be this utility hero that he typically is. You, like, I mean, we've talked about this before, and it was really showcased when he was introduced in the in the beginning. Is that he's like he's a big, big guy. Like, he's a big like as far as like teenagers go. Shoji's pretty massive, right? So, for them to never really play on how like physically strong he is, I, I you know, it was nice to see that showcase when he was kind of squaring up against Pony, and then seeing his quirk worked in in a combat situation where he like caught the spike behind him one because he saw it with like one of his eyes that he had attached to a limb i thought it was just, it was just really nice to see him just not get the shit kicked out of him and like spot people no i totally so, I, agree like i thought i thought it'd been weird like this kind of whole fight or even during the very first like non-canon episode how they treat him purely as a scouting hero now i know that's obviously where his biggest strength like lies but like when todoroki in this fight was like i need to go and attack but i can't leave shoji I'm like, Shoji's 6'9 with 10 arms. Like, he's going to be <laughs> fine, dude. Like, he probably would have a little bit of a chance against Tetsu Tetsu in a short fight. Like, yeah. he's not useless. So I thought it was kind of weird that I agree that I actually kind of see him standing up to Pony. Like, I'm like, there's really no way that he should lose this fight. He has eight arms to stop horns. Like, so I'm glad yeah. they showed that he stood a chance because the whole pure scouting hero doesn't make sense to me. I think that's a good part of his kit. But he has eight arms if you want to and you saw it looked like he had even more than eight in oh yeah yeah this fight he can do as many arms as he wants so i i, I, I agree with that more than as you now that he talked about it that i didn't realize it bothered me up to this point because he's never been a scouting hero up till this season where they just all of a sudden just trying, decided to change it over for him yeah they made him basically entirely utility so i'm glad to see him showcase that he can he can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe. like it was 
I was like, I uh, even last episode, like when he got taken off by Pony, like when she hit him with his horns, I'm like, oh no, he's just gonna be like pinned to the wall the whole time, and he's just like, it's just gonna be like, I gotta protect Shoji, but he rips them out like pretty effort effortlessly, and then starts going head to head with her. Yeah, but we talked about a little bit of character, so I'm gonna change up our kind of outline a little bit, and I guess I want to talk about the fight one last time, and that would be the ending. We all love the fight. We said there's so many good moments throughout it, everyone getting their spotlight. But are we satisfied with it ending in a draw? Would you have rather this gone on longer and it been a 2-1 or there have been some kind of last minute quirk awakening or something like that? Or are we all happy and think it's as good as a fight as it could have been even with it ending in a draw? I, I think it needs to end in a draw for this fight. I mean, it just, I, I think I'm more satisfied with it being a draw just because of the, the two like types of quirks coming up against each other. Um, like the Tetsu Tetsu versus Todoroki, I think having like that kind of end in a draw is super, super cool. Uh, and I really liked it, actually. Yeah, I think I think it uh I think it would discredit the the fight as a whole if you gave it to one or the other. Like, I mean, the the fight the the episode felt so intense because it ended in a draw and like they were so evenly matched that it just added to like the magnitude of the powers and everything and like and how how like hard these guys were going at each other. Because I mean, some of the some of the the captures in the other episodes felt like really just like really I don't know uh, like cheap. Like Ayoyama did absolutely dick all, and you know he just got fired in there really like you know really fast. Like it 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 makes the it make it reminds I feel like it reminds us that you know these are guys who are and women like aspiring to be heroes and stuff like that, right? So of course you're gonna have these crazy intense matches. Yeah, and. I will agree to that to a point. I think part of it was kind of what the uh, Beast Titan said in this episode that like it, when you're a pro hero, like retreating and waiting for help is an actual viable outcome. And that's what Pony did there. And was, I think that kind of showed part of like the difference between the classes in a way that OG was looking for a way to fight and end it. Cause that was the only outcome he really saw while Pony, as we've seen, they spend more time in class that, that she probably realized like, Oh, we learned this, that sometimes that is an actual outcome of a fight that I don't think anyone in class 1A would have ever made that decision. And that was definitely a class B move. Well, class 1A did make that decision with Ida. Ida specifically yeah. was looking at the, the 2-1B people and said, no, I need to prioritize saving Todoroki above all because I'm I'm the rescue hero. Fair. So he he was the only one who actually did make that on, on 1A, which I think is why like Ida is a little bit special in terms of being a hero. Yeah, and I guess, I just think overall, I, I mean, I love this fight. This is definitely my favorite fight by far. And I, I think there could have been a way. I mean, it just felt like there was more plus ultra moments on the Class 1A side. Maybe that's why it felt even better when it was a draw, because you kind of started feeling like there was going to be a transfer over to Class 1A. But Todoroki going hotter and pretty much channeling his inner Endeavor and kind of doing the special move that Endeavor's always wanted to do. And Ida showing off the uh, Recipro uh, Turbo that like, oh, Class of 1A has definitely got this. Like they're all leveling up. They're all having these plus ultra moments. So ending in a draw makes it feel even more. For me, I always like to see when maybe that's the main character syndrome. Maybe I would love for it somehow to be a 2-1 or something kind of like that. Because it kind of felt like Mudman just kept coming in and stopping anything from actually going forward. But that's what his quirk is. And that's what he can, can do. So it makes sense in the terms of the battle. But it's like, Every time something cool is about to happen, he came in and just kind of put it down. But that's a viable battle strategy. So I'm here and there, but I enjoyed the fight completely. So I guess I'll just say ending in a draw is fine because I don't have a better conclusion that won't get you two yelling at me. And I guess I saw this tweet right before we went live. And it's good to our next topic. But Bones is showing more love to Ida than Horikoshi has done in... 313 chapters or whatever season I had chapter up to in the manga. Ida got more love in this single episode. And I, we want to talk about it. I think that we have a ton of topics. So I just wanted to start it off with that kind of little funny thing. But you two take it wherever you want to go. Because there's a lot of things with Ida in these last two episodes we can continue to talk about. I know you talked a little bit about him last week too. Yeah, the one thing I wanted to bring up specifically about Ida is the comment Deku made of Recipro Turbo being faster than Gran Torino which is insane. That's actually insanely fast. Cause like Gran Torino is known for being like so fast, like you cannot like visually keep up with him. So like the fact that it is moving faster than that is like a huge, huge feat. Uh, so I just like wanted to make sure that we like heard that and like digested yeah. that bit of information. 
and they yeah, showed that in a really good way too. You can continue on, James, but just how they visualized how fast he was going compared to how he normally runs or other people going, they showed that off in a really good way. Well, yeah, they just they, they didn't have him running at all. Like the man was just he was off the ground entirely. Like it was all it was all engine, right? So I think yeah, it, they did a really good job of visualizing how uh, how fast he is and how a, like. Um, how he's still learning how to deal with it. But like, I mean, he, he wasn't, he wasn't because Juzo even said, as he was like falling out of consciousness, he's like, he said he didn't have control out of it, but this guy knocked me out with like one hit. Right. So I think it really, really drives home how powerful that, that special move is. But the big thing I wanted to talk about with Ida is the, the difference between Tenya Ida and the hero and Genium. I think you see, two very different characters in Ida, despite the fact they 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 both are Ida. I think Ida does such a good job of taking away what his brother was and, you know, manifesting that when he kind of puts on the uniform. And you saw this his entire episode. Like, it didn't it didn't feel like Ida to me at all, just because basically how he was talking, how he carried himself, when he was capturing Kybera, like, I mean, how he interacted with him. And not just, like, the villain stuff, but, like, just how, like, like he was 10,000 times more confident than we've ever seen him, right? So, and I think that is such a cool thing to see that Ida is like one of, I, one of the characters in this, in the show that really is a hero. Like, and I think he really like knows how to emanate that, that sort of, uh, persona way more than a lot of, like a lot of the other, uh, characters in this, in this show. And so I agree, but he also got to think it's been months since we've last seen Ida in like canon. These are the whole agency arc and all that. Like it's been a very long time since we've seen Ida. So while I agree in this episode, it very much seemed more like the hero and genium than it was Ida. But I think what your last point was is that Ida is the closest to be a hero. I don't think there is two different personalities inside of Ida. I think Ida in these last six months or however long it is in canon time has grown into this hero more. And there is still some hesitancy and is still trying to take in everything that his brother was to become the best and genuine that he can be. But I don't see them as two different entities. I see them as Ida being the first one to become a pro hero, like you said, and that all pro heroes are going to have two people. They're going to be different when they're out of costume versus when they're in a fight, but they're not two different entities. He's just slowly becoming in genium as he learns what it means to be in genium. So I think no, we're I think, on the same page. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. I think it's, a, I think it's a good point because I think, yeah, he had like he not more than most, but like he has had a definite amount of time to kind of do that. I just compare him to people like, not even like Ayoyama. I think Ayoyama is like kind of like a cop out answer, but even people like uh, like Tokoyami, who is like trying to become a hero, but still has a lot of like way more hesitancy than 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 Ida, right? And is just not as confident as kind of like embodying that hero you know yeah. uh persona right i think but no I, I think you make a good point it has been a while since we've seen ida like in his ingenium kind of role and i think the two yeah probably are closer to amalgamating than most other characters yeah, because the last time he got probably major screen time was the stain arc yeah was I mean, that it? those are the flashbacks we used from this episode, i mean that, that's so what he got in me no you know no, he was no. in uh the one for all for one, one for all fight. but yeah, I mean, yeah those right. two moments those are two very small moments but i mean that's all the screen time we've gotten in like two or three seasons with Eden now. So obviously it makes sense for him to have a big change in his character here mm -hmm. because it's been so long. And he was one of the main three when it started. Yeah. And then that one. Uh, the yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts on him, Dylan? Um, I like Eda. I think, I, I think what all, all of you said were, were pretty true. I mean, he is the first one to feel like a hero. Like no one else feels like a hero. They feel like people with powers, but they don't feel like heroes yet, except in Genio. Yeah, and I think, if anything, giving it to Class 1B, I think Class 1B, uh, there's a couple more people that feel a little bit more like Hero. I think Mudman very much is close to that. I, I, I think out of everyone else in this fight, too, just kind of going back to that, that I, I think we didn't talk too much about Mudman, but I, maybe you guys did a lot last week, but his quirk is incredibly cool. I think he's incredibly quick to react, and I mean, maybe sacrificing yourself and taking down a city structure to take down the villains, maybe is it going to be a very practical thing you do in the hero field, but just showing how much that he is more on the hero side versus someone like Tetsu Tetsu, who just wanted to fight, 
So I think Mudman was definitely a character that in this fight stood out to me majorly. I think he was meant to be as one of the recommendation students, but he was such a cool moment within this entire fight. Yeah, uh, I think I think a lot of Class One B doesn't get it like enough credit, especially in episodes like this where um, they're they're like they're very strong competitors. But Class One A, of course, has the you know the 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 plus ultra moments, Ida going reciprocal burst, like us almost getting prominence burn out of Todoroki, right? Like, but you have guys like Mudman who are incredibly effective. Suit like you know he you like he had one mistake this entire episode yeah and that was it right and like it, I think if he didn't make that one mistake and left Ida a lot like if he did he took care of Ida immediately he would have been fine right or he would have like you know stalled Ida so I think that shows like how how strong that class is as a whole and I just I I I I know it's not on the docket I know it's it's kind of off 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 the the uh, you know, down the rabbit hole a little bit, but I think Tetsu Tetsu need, deserves a ton of praise. We you, like again, it, I think, and we've done this a lot with uh, Kirishima as well because it's such a plain quirk. But Tetsu Tetsu just made his quirk look so badass, and he did such like I. This was the most Tetsu Tetsu we've ever seen him. Yeah, just abs like moving forward, not stopping. Doesn't matter what's thrown at him, and he and like the, and the best part about him is is he's he loves it. Yeah. Like, that is what he lives for, right? So. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with what we assume is going to be one of the top three heroes within the next yeah. five years in the universe, which is... Yeah, and red, this is his Red Riot moment, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, like, and laughing at him. That's, the, like, that's what I love about Tetsu Tetsu is he's just... He's, like, where, you know, Kirishima is so much more bravado and stuff like that. Tetsu Tetsu is much more, like, just that brawler that just... Like, he's more of, like, a Rappa than, a, than you know, than a, than a Red Riot. I, one other last thing, um, sorry, we're just kind of going off topic here. I know, we're just going. Random, <laughs> random things coming up, a lot of fun things. I, do you know how many people could take advantage of those, like, little metal tips at the end of, um. Oh, Kybera's hands? Kybera's yeah. hands? Like, how many people that if, like, they're pretty much indestructible is kind of what they made it sound like. Like, what if you coated Ojiro's tail with that? What if Deku has an arm sleeve of that? Like, just imagine, like, the stuff that you could do with that. Like, I thought it was just kind of a cool little thing that explained more of why his attacks hurt so much. Because a gyrating hand is going to hurt him a little bit, and it's not going to do much thing. But then he showed that, and it's like, they're spitting little nails pretty much on the fingers. Like, it just goes to show that he got such little time. He was captured pretty easily. But he still has these cool little things that makes his quirk, even though it's super ordinary, so much more powerful just because of one little adjustment and how many characters could be leveled up like that by just having the equivalent of fingertips is like how what made him a 10 times stronger hero. But I think we've gone off topic a little bit, so I think we should kind of wrap it up there and go into the plus ultra reward from here. Because I think this is going to be a very hard episode to decide. Yeah, but if you guys do not oh. know what plus ultra reward is, it is an award that we do each and every week where we pick one character that went beyond that went plus ultra and deserves to stand out more than anyone. Each of the three hosts will pick their own. And then at the end of the season, we will title up to see who is the plus ultra recipient of the season. I was gone last week, so I'll give you two a second and I'll do my pick first. But I have to pick Ida. I mean, without Ida in this fight, Class 1A stands absolutely no chance. He was the only one that captured anyone from Class 1B and almost won the entire fight for them if it wasn't for a collapsing tower and him already being slightly injured. I mean, he probably shouldn't have got this much love based on the manga, but in this episode, he stood out. And they made sure to make that clear. James? Uh, see, I know I know, we're doing it for the season, and I know I'm going to... I'm basically, like, burning a vote with this, but I, I really don't care. I think it's, I think it's Tetsu Tetsu. I, I really do. I, you know, you, you have a very plain quirk. You have a very straightforward guy and he did not give a shit. And he was, he was finding Todoroki and he was beating him. And Todoroki had to have this crazy anime ass awakening just to be able to deal with a guy who's just made a steal. And I think, I think the sheer fact that Tetsu Tetsu was able to like hold his own and keep moving forward. I think he deserves it. I know he didn't have anything flashy, but I'm giving it to Tetsu Tetsu. Dylan? This is a tough one. This is a really tough one. And I, I knew, like, the second I was watching this, I was like, I'm not going to be able to decide. It is going to be super <laughs> hard to pick because Ida, it just had complete, like, breakout moments here. Um, Tetsu Tetsu was really amazing. 
but he's picking you're gonna get upset dumb. he's you're drinking upset. he picking something dumb he's going pony he's going it's pony. Victory, po- pony she <laughs> had such amazing like like uh like control over the battlefield like if she is what actually, man like, uh, no no listen listen she oh. she easily got a capture right easily got a capture she could have gotten more and she saved the day for one b at the end as well by having like the quick thinking of floating everyone up i i i don't know if you realize she could be hawks level like like she doesn't have the, we, the yeah you and i have talked that, about that but we talked about this last week she oh. is almost hawks level with her horns like it, it's pretty insane and the the level of control that she has already um that she showed especially like towards the end is like i think nothing to mess with and i i think for what she was doing, kind of like it was like brushed off a little bit for what she was doing, but it was it was it was pretty good. I, I think I think the I mean I I'll give you a bit on the pony thing, but I would pick Mudman over Pony. I did pick like, Mudman over Pony. Pony would I have think, been I, captured if not for Mudman. Her, no, her think, battlefield I control Mudman, wasn't that good. I think Mudman fumbled too much on his decision making. I think I think that's why I wouldn't give it to him with the with the with that, without dealing with Ida. Yeah, like I mean that like yeah, I think. But I like I like it's it's it was like it's such a hard episode because so many of them did did so many great things, right? I think you could make an argument for most. Ca- I think Todoroki you could make an argument for. I mean, I think there's a yeah. lot of people you could make, except for Ojiro and Kaibara. I think those are the only two you can't really make. And maybe Shoji's a little bit on like the Shoji. bottom here. Yeah. But I mean, most yeah. I mean, well, that's five out of the eight characters in this fight you could have made an argument for, and that's pretty impressive for an episode where everyone else there's one or two that you could have picked. So, really Absolutely. great episode. Cannot wait for next week. Obviously, Bakugo being in action, seeing the other recommendation student. It's going to be an amazing fight. I can't wait to see it animated, especially if it has the same level of animation from this episode going into next week. I think next week is going to be phenomenal. But with that, we will be wrapping up the episode there. Thank you all so much for listening to this week's episode of the Class 1A podcast, recapping everything that happened in episode 8. We'll be back here next Saturday to recap everything that happens in episode nine. And as always, if you want to keep updated with everything we do, go over to twitter.com slash class one, a pod, or go to youtube.com slash class one, a pod as well to catch all of our content, all of our tweets, all kinds of stuff. It's all there. So make sure to go and follow both of those accounts. And again, we will see you back in class next Saturday.